Hi, my name is Will Nunziata, and I'm a director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I'm speaking with Phoenix's latest celebrity artist, an award-winning composer, lyricist, book writer, and producer of new musical work, Jamie Maylitz. In New York, Jamie's work has been featured at Lincoln Center, Fine Signs 54 Below, NYU, Dixon Place, under St. Mark's Theater in Broadway Night at Prohibition. She received her MFA from the Graduate Musical Theater Program at NYU Tisch, and she has written over 12 full-length musicals. She's a member of the Off-Broadway League, ASCAP, the Dramatist Guild of America, and Maestra. And I am also thrilled to be set to direct her hit musical, The Valley, which she co-wrote with the beautiful and amazing composer, Eric Vegan. Now, let's take a look at one of Jamie's original songs right now. But nothing about this felt real. Nothing about this felt right. As I crawl out of this bed in the glow of the moonlight, I wonder, have I changed? If the action was a lie, does it count? Well, hello, Jamie. How are you? good it's good to see your face oh uh, it's so good to see you now listen <laughs> we just heard your amazing song hiding place from a song cycle of yours and that was sung by gabrielle caruba who yeah. before the shutdown was the leading actress of dear evan hansen on broadway yes yeah, she played zoe you you attract fancy people jamie you're that good i, I wouldn't say it's because i'm that good i just i i love working with people and i've been lucky to be introduced to some really wonderful people to work with. Well, listen, I was very grateful almost a year ago to be introduced to you and your talent and your musical, The Valley, that you wrote alongside Eric Fegan, but we will get to that in a moment. But first, talk to me a little bit about that song, how it came about, and the song cycle that it's a part of. Yeah, um, so basically for that song cycle, um, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of just kind of personal, it's funny, the song cycle ended up being a theme that just came together because it's just a lot of songs that came from like my feelings and I'm a very anxious and messy person. Um, so the song cycle is called What's Wrong With Me with two, ex uh, two question marks. I love it. Um, because it's usually when I'm very like um, in my head, I, um, I have anxiety and OCD and depression and I'm very gay. And so whenever I had a very like extra uh, song about any of those things or about like any like disaster moment of something that I did, um, I was like, I don't know what this song's gonna be, but it's a song and it happened. And it ended up coming together in this uh, song cycle, basically about me being a disaster human. Um, so yeah, this song, um, I wrote um, when I was still in school at the Graduate Musical Theater Writing Program. Um, at and NYU? Was, yes, at NYU. Uh, ironically, it was before I came out as gay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I actually have two, two funny stories about this song. Go for one, it. One uh, shortly after I wrote it and one very recently. Uh, so shortly after I wrote it, my mom was like, Jamie, is there anything you wanna tell me? And I was like, no, it's fictional. It's really annoying to me that people always assume when I write a song that it's about me. Not all my songs are about me. You know, I'm a writer. I it's my job to make realistic characters. This you did the artist writer. line. You did the artist line. Yeah. Well, and it is true that like sometimes I do write songs and it's just a character. And I'm putting like, you know, you can put a little bit of yourself into a character to make them real, but like it's not everything I write is about me. But this was about me. <laughs> I just didn't tell her at the time, um, which is fine. You know, it took me till I was 30 years old to come out. And, you know, part of the reason I write is because I, you know, love to connect with people and give them something to relate to. Um, and, it, you know, if there are people who need to hear the song um, and it would make them feel less alone, I love that. That's a huge part of the reason I write. And so well, one of the, the other story about the song is um, very recently I, I got a message on social media and someone told me that um, 
hearing the song actually helped them come out to their family. Oh. And I basically started like bawling and I was like, oh my God, this is like, right? This means the world to me. And I was like a mess. So well, look, Jamie, I, I know this is your friend, but I know the world is going to continue to know this through your work that in your vulnerability, you become not only relatable, but you allow and give permission to kids of all ages that it's okay to live in the mess, that there's actually beauty in the mess. And you as a composer and a lyricist and a book writer show that in addition to the 12, well, more than a dozen new musicals that you have written. And again, people can go to your website below this video to find out more. You are part of some really cool organizations, obviously, including the Off-Broadway League, ASCAP, and the Dramatists Guild. I want you to talk a little bit about Maestra, um, this fantastic, amazing, beautiful organization. Yeah, um, so Maestra is an organization that exists to uh, support the women who make the music in the musical theater industry. And I've, I've been with them um, for most, not all, but most of the time that they've been an official organization. Um, and basically, as soon as I graduated from school, I, I was volunteering at um, the Lilly Awards and I saw Georgia Stitt make a speech about the statistics of women in orchestra pits and it was appalling. <laughs> and so I basically went up to her at the party after the Lilly Awards and I was like, I need to volunteer for Maestra. Um, and she's the kind of person who follows up. So I had given her my contact information and next thing I know I'm volunteering for them. And next thing I know, like I'm saying like, hey, if you ever need like an admin assistant, if things go farther, please think of me. And I was a very active volunteer. So I ended up working for them and now I'm their admin assistant. And uh, it's, um, it's a amazing organization. It's growing, it's doing really amazing things. Um, you know, there's a directory where people can search for women to work with as musicians, as collaborators, as, um, you know, it's for getting women hired and for finding women to work with. And it's really great for that. And also they're really looking into the statistics of how are women getting hired and like finding ways to actually make a difference in the disparity that exists in our industry. Um, and there's a timeline on our website of women composers on Broadway that shows these giant gaps where like, mm. there's just nothing for like huge portions of years. And um, we actually just, just added the timeline of women composers off Broadway. And just to kind of show the patterns that exist, um, just all these things like, the thing that I, one of the things I really love about Maestra is, you know, a lot of people, when there's a problem, they'll say, oh man, it sucks that that's a problem. I, I hate that. I'm so mad. And then nothing happens. But, you know, this organization has existed as an official organization for not that long and they've already done so much and they have these great plans to do so much more. And that's why I'm so passionate about working for them. And, you know, I'll, I'll I work so hard for them and will continue to because they're really doing it. They're really trying to make a difference. Well, I love it, Jamie. I mean, not only are you an incredible talent, you obviously have surrounded yourself with the best in working on your craft, continuing to work on your craft. I'm so thrilled to not only call you a friend, but a collaborator. And on top of it, you're doing some really great work, you know, with for society. And um, I know when you talk about those gaps that you can see on the Meister Music website, where women composers haven't been seen Broadway and off Broadway. You know, I'm not blowing smoke when I tell you, because I remind you often, you're going to be filling those gaps, my friend, and you already are on your way. And I'm thrilled just to see you in your star ready, already rising, continue to rise. And I'm excited that, you know, in you coming on to Phoenix as an artist, that not only will a lot of this country get to know your work, but People around the world, and a word that I've been mentioning to a lot of my friends is that word transcendent. And your work transcends. And you know, when people look up your work and the array of subjects that you write about as a composer, lyricist, book writer, it kind of transcends universal topics about characters who live all around the world. So this is just me on my soapbox saying, I'm so proud of you, my friend, and I'm so, so grateful for you speaking with me today. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Jamie, talk soon.
In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.